Hey guys, welcome you all in P3P Technology to the point. In this video, we will talk about the questions related to AWS Certified Cloud Practitioner exam. And in this video, I have covered new questions and new services as well. And while going through the questions, I'll explain each and every option. That means we will cover around 30 to 14 services in this video, in this short video. So without wasting time, let's start with the questions now. So before going through the questions, let's understand what are the topics covered in this small video. So we have covered the questions related to availability zone, EFS file system, route 53, EBS snapshot, golden images, bootstrapping, containerization, workflow automation like AWS Ops work. Uh, we will also understand uh, when we are launching our EC2 instances in different regions, VPCs or different availability zone and different edge locations, what will happen and which is uh, used for which scenario also we will understand about the cloud computing model like IAS that is infrastructure as a service platform as a service software as a service also we will understand what are the deployment model we are having like on premises cloud hybrid cloud public cloud private cloud we will also understand few things related to IAM services like IAM access key ID secret access key when we can use it or uh, what exactly the IAM policy and uh, when we need to use IAM role and uh, also we will understand about the security token service when we can use it so in this small video we will cover questions related to these all topics so while going through the questions i'll explain each and every option so you can manage other questions as well related to the same services so now let's start with the first question so guys let's talk about this question in this question they are asking which of the following is a method of backup available in the aws cloud the option we are having availability zones Amazon EFS file system, Amazon root 53 alias record or Amazon EBS snapshot. So before going to the right answer, let's go through the options one by one. So if we will talk about the availability zone, availability zone is actually a part of our AWS architecture or we can say the global infrastructure which provides high availability and the fault tolerance. So this is used when there is any issue with the uh, data center then this help us availability zone okay so it provides high availability and it help us in a fault tolerance so it's not actually a backup solution here we are looking for a backup solution for aws so um, uh, availability zone is not correct here next option we are having efs file system which is actually provide file based storage for us uh, and it uses some nfs protocol and we can mount that storage to any instances but when we are talking about the backup solution it's not the backup solution or backup method next is um, uh, amazon root 53 alias record which actually as we know that in aws root 53 is a kind of a dns service so it provides dns service and alias record is a type of record that can make matter public domain name to a aws service target so any name you can define alias of that name to any service target in our aws so it's not a backup solution it's kind of a redirecting service from the dns and in the uh, in amazon or we can say in aws root 53 is a dns service so it is also not a backup solution if we will talk about the amazon evs snapshot so evs is actually a block based storage which is kind of a virtual hard disk for our ec2 instances and we can back up our EBS volume which is attached to our instances with the UJ snapshot. So uh, yes, EBS snapshot is a backup method and which provides point in time backup for our data related to the EC2 instances. So this is so for this question, our answer would be Amazon EBS snapshot. Let's talk about next question now. Let's talk about this question. In this question, they are asking what is the term for describing the action of automatically running scripts on Amazon EC2 instances when launched to install software. So if you are uh, having some knowledge related to the development or running any script, then you know this question easily without reading the uh, learning the cloud itself. But uh, here in terms of Amazon EC2, we need to describe the action of automatically running script. So the option we are having golden images, bootstrapping, containerization and workflow automation. So let's go through the option one by one. So if we'll talk about the golden images, golden images are kind of a snapshot for of our pre-configured EBS volumes, which we normally use to launch the new instances or new EC2 instances or new virtual machines, we can say. And uh, we do it, uh, you know, whenever we launch our new instance, we can use our Amazon machine images that is AMIs. So these are kind of a golden images we are having. What is the bootstrapping? Bootstrapping is the execution of automated action to the services uh, any services in uh, AWS like EC2 or RDS, uh, RDS uh, this is typically in the form of a script that run when the instance are launched. So in the question, they are asking the same thing. 
that uh, we need to define or describe the action of automatically running the script. So bootstrapping is something whenever our instance is launched, some script should run automatically. So that is the method called bootstrapping. Next is the containerization. Containerization is something we can convert our application into a in the form of containers and then we can launch our application inside the container as well. So to create this one, we have a container runtime and Docker container. There are many container runtime available. So actual containerization is to convert our application into containers. Next option we are having workflow automation. Workflow automation actually it is workflow means some process which is going on step by step so it's a process or we can say the orchestration of automated action this is associated with the services such as SAF or puppet or in aws we have aws ops work which is known as workflow automation in aws so here we need to identify the action of automatically running a script that is bootstrapping so we learned about bootstrapping what exactly it is whenever our ec2 instance launch so there is some predefined script that we want to uh, execute at the time of launch. So that process is known as bootstrapping. So for this question, our answer is bootstrapping. Let's talk about next question now. Let's talk about this question. How should an organization deploy an application running on multiple EC2 instances to ensure that a power failure does not cause an application outage? The option we are having, uh, we should launch the EC2 instances in the separate regions. We should launch the EC2 instances into different VPCs, that is virtual private clouds. Uh, we should launch the EC2 instances into different availability zones, or we should launch the EC2 instances into edge locations. So let's understand the options one by one. Is see, uh, we should we will see the positive and negatives of this one because we can launch anywhere, but we will follow the best practice to solve this question. So if we will talk about the separate regions, so see, sep if we will launch our application or we can say uh, in multiple ec2 in separate regions see uh, so there will be a issue with the latency means the performance the reachability and also whenever we talk about related to the power failure or some hardware failure regions are not good option for that one for that one we should go with the availability zone uh, so regions is used when we expect some natural disaster okay so that, that's mainly used for disaster recovery so we will not go with the separate region option uh, if we talk about the different vpcs again it will create the complexity and next thing not only the complexity but also uh, if it is within the same region then automatically our infrast application will be under the same infrastructure so deploying into different vpc may still result in our ec2 instances being deployed into a single availability zone so it will not help us in case of power failure because availability zone is a component which is having power uh, uh, independent from the avail uh, other availability zone so there will be no impact if power is failure or any hardware issue is there then our availability zone will get down then we are having uh, our application or instance running in different availability zones so that's why for this question uh, we will go for the launch the EC2 instance in different availability zone. Uh, let's understand why we will not go for the edge locations because we can't deploy our EC2 instances into edge location in AWS. So that's why we can use the last option. First option we will not go because our latency will be uh, slow or that means it will be higher. So our performance will be slow here to reach the EC2 instances and also it is used mainly for the digester recovery if at any natural issue natural climate issue is there uh, next is about the vpc we can't use it because of complexity or we can say in some cases it may might be possible that we choose to use different vpc but it will come under the same availability zone so that's why we can't go there correct answer for this question is third option that is different availability zone so we will go for this one last option we can't use our ec2 instance into the edge location so that's why we are not going for the option four let's talk about next question now Let's talk about this question. In this question, they are asking which cloud computing model gives the IT department the highest level of flexibility and management control. The option we are having infrastructure as a service, platform as a service, software as a service, or on premises cloud. As we already know that uh, what these features do, uh, if we talk about the infrastructure as a service, because uh, in this one, we are having the control from the OS to the application level. Next option is platform as a service, so where we get the access from the runtime where we can write our code and develop our application and then we can launch our application and all so we are having the control from the uh, 
run time if we talk about the software as a service this is the computing model where we are getting access to the software through the license base like uh, if you are using your gmail account then you are just using your username and password and you can use that service similarly if you are uh, providing or launching your service uh, any application as a service then th that falls under software as a service so in, if you will see the control of this we will talk about that one later first let's understand the last option also that is on-premises cloud on-premises cloud is actually a deployment solution like private cloud public cloud hybrid and on-premises not the computing model so directly we can eliminate this question but here if we will talk about the flexibility and management control also we can get the higher or we can say the highest level of control here because it is within our premises we have more control here but we don't have the flexibility so we can directly eliminate this question from here and second thing here we need to identify the cloud computing model not the deployment model so that's why it is wrong out of these three you know that in software as a service we have less responsibility and less control because we can't define everything what we want so we can't go for this one platform as a service we, can, we are just getting access from the uh, runtime not from the os level okay so that is uh, here we have the less control again if we will talk about the infrastructure as a service yes after the hardware <coughs> our os is installed and uh, which os we want we can choose that one and inside the uh, os what application you want you can choose that one everything is in your control right so we are having more control here and more flexibility also what type of control means what type of resource we want what is should be the configuration everything we can decide there so we are having more flexibility more control in the infrastructure as a service that is the computing model we are looking for in this question so our answer will be infrastructure as a service let's talk about next question now let's talk about this question in this question we are asking which iam entity can be used for assigning permission to aws services the option we are having iam access key id and secret access key the second option we are having iam policy third option is iam role uh, last option we are having security token service that is in short we know as HDS. so let's talk about one by one all the options so if we will talk about the IAM access key ID and uh, secret access key which is normally are uh, the assigned to IAM users and which is normally used for programmatic access using I, uh, either API or through CLI command line interface so here uh, we need to identify the entity which is used for assigning permission so it is not for assigning the permission if we will talk about the IAM policy that is also not correct here because it is a policy document uh, that is used to define the permission what type of permission can be applied to the users groups or the roles uh, third option we are having IAM role yes that is the correct answer for this question because with the IAM roles we can delegate the permission to the resources for the users and the services without using permanent credentials fourth option which, uh, which is security token service that is HDS which is normally using used for gaining temporary security credentials so it is not for assigning the permission so whenever we need to define the permission we will use IAM policy we need to gain the temporary credential we use HDS and when we need to assign the permission we will use IAM rules so our answer for this question is IAM rules let's talk about next question now so guys that's it in this video i'll come up with more question in my next part i hope you find this video helpful i hope you understand the concept which is mentioned in this video in the options so hope it will help you to learn and prepare yourself for your exam and the discussion which you are going to have with your stakeholders or while going through the interviews so don't forget to click on like button share with your friends so it can help others as well and click on subscribe so you will get the latest update once the next part is available and you will get the updates about the free certification as well. So without wasting time, keep learning. See you in the next video.